Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're featuring the 1910 Buick. It's called the Buick Bug. It's a race car. Now I know what you're thinking. When you think of Buicks, you tend to think of big land barges like the Roadmasters back there, the 55, the 57, maybe cars like the Wildcat. But at the turn of the century, Buicks were out and out racing cars. And that's what they did. And they built some of the finest racing cars in the country. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have this car brought to us by the Sloan Museum in Flint, Michigan. That's one of those kind of cool car museums that's hidden away. There's so many of these around the country, and it's fun to be able to help publicize them here. Let's meet the curator, Jeremy Dimmick, right? Yeah. yeah How are you, right. Jeremy? How are you doing? Good, thank you. Good. Hey, thanks for bringing this. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for having us. You know, we have the Peterson Museum here in Los Angeles, and we have the Nethercut, but uh, Michigan is, of course, home of the automobile. Sure. And there's so many hidden away. Where exactly is your museum? Yeah, we're in Flint. Um, we're right downtown uh, on the Cultural Center campus, so we're easy to find. Cool, and, uh, cool. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this car. This car is called the Buick Bug. Yes. Uh, 622 cubic inches, right? 622 four cubic inch, four cylinder. Yeah, I mean, that's a coffee can size piston. They're, right. they're pretty good size. Uh, 57 horsepower. It's a Buick Valvin head engine, only about 2,600 pounds, so it, it could get up to you know 105 miles per hour. And everybody else was doing flatheads. Buicks had the valve in the head, the overhead valve. David Dunbar Buick, of course, a lot of people don't know this. He got famous because he was the guy, I believe, that uh, he personalized bath. He came up yeah. with the idea of personalizing bathtubs. He patented that idea and he made a fortune, didn't he? Yeah, yep, he did. He, yep, started in plumbing fixtures and then moved into right, the Right, right, and then he sold Buick to Durant. Right. And uh, that's when it really took off. I, I don't think Buick, like a lot of great guys, he didn't wind up with anything. Out of, right. He kind of died penniless. Yes. Well, that's another sad story. Yeah. <laughs> but his name stayed on these great automobiles. This was the first race car to have one driver sitting in the center of the car, correct? Right. Yep, yep, one driver in the center, center drive, and then, of course, the radiator on top. Yeah, uh, now know, this, moved. if you're wondering what this is, this is the radiator, and although it, you wouldn't think it would cool there, actually, it, it does quite well. Yeah, it? yep, it yeah. does. Yep, and it was more, you know, they moved it there more for the aerodynamic than, you know, anything else. Right. Car are these pneumatic and... tires or solid rubber? They're pneumatic. Oh, yep. they are pneumatic? Yep. Okay. Because I didn't see a valve stem anywhere. Yeah, they're on the inside. They're actually wood-spoked wheels with oh, okay. aluminum covers on oh, either side. Oh, and you put the covers on. Okay. Yep. Yep. So to check the tires, you have to take these off? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's convenient, isn't it? <laughs> Very. Oh, my yes. God. Yeah. But you know, it looks like a real race car. It's aerodynamic, kind of cool. And make no mistake about it, these were dangerous cars to drive. You know, 100 miles an hour in this would be like 200 miles an hour in a, in, in a modern car. Right. And even uh, Louis Chevrolet, who drove one of the cars, um, and his, his first practice day at Indianapolis, they built these cars and then built them down, uh, took them down to Indianapolis a couple days later. Right. His first day of practice, he popped a tire and rolled one. Wow. So it gives you an idea of kind of how dangerous if a guy, you know, like Chevrolet. Three speed or four speed? Three speed. Three speed transmission, okay. Yeah, three speed. And brakes only in the rear. Right. And even that's overselling them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Even, <laughs> even calling them brakes yeah. is probably overselling them. I mean, you know, it's a beautiful looking thing. I mean, it looks really purposeful. Tell us the, the, the ram's horn up here, the ram's head. What is that for? Yeah, they, they put that on there. It kind of goes back to the story of the car being created. They, they built this car uh, while they were backing up. They were down in Indianapolis in May of 1910. And uh, they actually got uh, disqualified um, for using a car that uh, they didn't build enough um, right. stock models. So they, they uh, kind of went back to Flint on the train with their tail between their legs and came up with this car. Uh, Bob Berman, Louis Chevrolet, and uh, Enos DeWaters, uh, one of the Buick engineers. And they said they were going to butt their way back into racing. So hence the, hence the Rams. Oh, I see. There. Very good. Yeah. That's right. As I remember. And this was before the Indianapolis 500. This right. is 1910. Indianapolis 500 didn't start till 11. And people would race stock cars, basically. Right. And, and what Buick did was build a purpose-built race car. Right. Oh, no, sorry, you can't do that. Uh, they built this for the 600-plus uh, races, the okay. free-for-alls. Okay, yeah. very good, very yeah. good. Can we open the hood and see what the engine looks yeah, like? Yeah, absolutely. Undo it here? Yep. Well, let's snap it there, and then we've got a couple bolts up here. Wow, look at that. The engine, uh, the chassis, um, it has been rebodied um, right. since, but everything else is pretty much original. But uh, then this thing just shoots fire and brimstone. Well, I'm anxious to see it fire up a little bit. <laughs> you had some piston rings. Where was that yeah. piston ring? Yep. Look at the size. Look at the size of those. Oh my God, four of those. I think it's like driving a bass drum. It yeah. must have been just, <laughs> just frightening to drive. Yeah. 
but of course, being overhead valve, that was a huge deal. You know, everybody ran flatheads. Yeah. Up until the, the 50s. Here's a car, 1910, with overhead valves. The whole uh, Buick thing has changed. I mean, they were fast race cars. And, you know, I, my dad had a Wildcat, yeah. you know, the whole thing. You think of it as big, luxury barges. Right. You don't think of it as being high-performance automobiles, but they really were. That was... Durant's thing. Those are the yeah. days when you raced on Sunday, you sold a lot of cars on Monday. Exactly. You know? That was that was the point of these things. They wanted to get the Buick name out there, talk about how fast they were, how agile they were, and yeah. um, you know, to the point where they didn't even run these in races that they didn't think they were going to win. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and even though you say only 57 horses, those are Clydesdales. Right. Those are yes. big. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> those are big clomp <laughs> horses, boy. Yeah. 622 cubic inches. Think how big that is. That's... <laughs> What, that's bigger than a Viper engine. <laughs> Way bigger than a Viper engine. Oh my God, and it's only four cylinders. Four cylinders. Is it a foot brake or a hand brake? It's a foot brake and a hand brake. It is a foot brake yep. and a hand brake. Neither one worked right. very well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, right. let's look at the dashboard. Let's look at the inside of the car. Okay. This is advance and retard or a hand throttle? Yes. Yep. It's uh, advanced. It's more, yeah, uh, we have it kind of dummied up where it's right. start and right. <laughs> start and run. So, yeah, it right. was, was the spark advance, but with the, with the new ignition system, it's So simplified. what gauges do we bit. have? We have oil pressure, which you need, fuel pressure. What is the center one? Water yeah. Water temperature. Yep. Here's yep. your... Now, your gear shift lever looks like it's right out of one of the production automobiles. Right. It's a big, heavy brass thing there. Beautiful <laughs> wood steering wheel. I think we got to fire it up. A little bit of throttle, you pump it up. And then just turn the key, and it should. And it has a key, that was added later, yeah. right? Yeah, yep, that was added in the 40s. Is the key on now or no? Oh, there you go. Ready? Take it from start to run. Yep, should be good. That's a racing car. And boy, that's real state of the art back in the day. Body on it, we'll take it around the block. Are you got all four in? Yep, I'm good. Okay, let it down slowly. I always love these kind of straps. The Bugattis have these. And I went to a Bugatti guy and said, How much for a set of straps? He said, oh, About $500. I said, Okay. Then I went down to the equestrian shop and I said, How much are straps like this? He said, About 12 bucks. Okay, great. Great. Went with the 12 bucks. Can't tell the difference. <laughs>